Welcome back to Top Movie Recaps. Today I'm going to explain a horror film from 2022, titled The Cellar. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. The Woods family is moving into their new home in the countryside. Kira and Brian are very proud of the house they bought for their children, and their son Stephen is excited as well, but their daughter Ellie is a different story. She hates having left her friends behind and feels disconnected from her parents, thinking they don't understand her. This house called Zayos is very particular. There's an old painting of a man with a finger raised, and letters from an unfamiliar alphabet with a triangle under them which are placed above every door, except for one that just has a pentagon. When they check out the cellar, they don't find it very interesting, but on their way out, the door gets closed before Ellie can leave. There's something wrong with the lock that won't let her open it again, and when she feels something in the dark approaching, she begins getting scared. Fortunately, the key is hanging right next to the door, so Brian uses it to let her out. In the evening, Kira asks Ellie to babysit Stephen because she and Brian need to go to the office for an emergency meeting. While Ellie is on the phone with an old friend, she suddenly gets jump-scared by a strange figure, it's just Stephen, wearing a cloak and a weird-looking skull that he found in a hidden compartment in the rec room. The family hadn't known about this hidden compartment so Ellie checks it out and finds a plaque in it that says, Solviti Coagula, an old record player, and an abacus. Stephen says he's heard the house used to be owned by a witch that made a pact with the devil, then asks to try the record player. Ellie gets it to work and the recording plays the voice of a man reading the equation written on the record before it starts counting. A few hours later, a strange breeze comes from under the cellar door and cuts off power in the entire house. Ellie calls her mother for help, and Kira tells her to go down to the cellar to check the circuit breaker. Too scared to enter such a room in the dark, Ellie says she can't do this. So Kira tells her a little trick of hers she uses when she needs to clear her mind, she counts. Kira guides Ellie through the phone, encouraging her with each step she takes and counts. Ten should be the last step, but when Ellie reaches it, she closes her eyes and falls. On the other end of the line, Kira can hear her counting up to 30 and not responding to anything she says. So both Kira and Brian hurry to return home. When they get there, they can't find Ellie anywhere in the house, so they call the police. A quick search of the surrounding woods is done to no avail. And since there isn't evidence of any crime happening and Ellie has run from home before, the cops just tell the parents to wait for news since she's probably at a friend's house. In the morning, the family asks some neighbors for their help and they go into the forest to search again, but the result is the same. Brian understands that Ellie had been mad with them, so it's natural that she ran away, but Kira doesn't think that's the case. She's sure something happened to Ellie because of how eerie her voice sounded while counting. The next day, Kira begins hanging up missing person signs and forgets to pick up Stephen at school until the teacher calls her. Once her son is with her, Kira goes to the police station to see if there is any news, but the detective doesn't have much to say. They've checked security cameras at bus and train stations, they also called Ellie's friends, but there are no leads, especially since they haven't found her phone either. The only important thing the detective can comment on is the fact that Ellie has been bullied and harassed on social media for a while. Feeling guilty because she didn't know that, Kira asks for forensics to come to check the cellar because she's convinced her daughter didn't run away. Once again, the detective must remind her that since this isn't a criminal case, he can't do more. When she goes back home, Kira notices the phrase, Solviti Coagula, is carved above the front door, so she decides to search for it on the internet while Stephen makes his ball bounce against the cellar door. The search results reveal this phrase is connected to old alchemy and means dissolve and coagulate. The pictures related to it show a five-pointed star and a picture of a weird snake. With her curiosity piqued, Kira calls Stephen over, and her son joins her after dropping his ball near the cellar. Stephen tells his mom that nothing out of the ordinary happened the night Ellie disappeared. The only thing they did differently was to turn on the record player. Considering it unimportant, Kira puts her attention back on the computer to check Ellie's social media, where she finds out her daughter had gotten an anarchist tattoo that she never told her family about. Afterward, Kira decides to check the cellar again. She stares at the pentagon above the door for a moment before going inside with a light tube. This time, she notices there are Roman numbers on the steps and an equation at the end of it, matching the one on the record player. But the most shocking surprise comes when the tube's UV light reveals a bunch of disturbing faces painted on the wall. This is enough for the cops to finally send a forensics team, of which one of the men accidentally pushes Stephen's ball inside the cellar. Unfortunately, the cops don't find any other clues and the only thing they can say is that the painting had been there since the 50s. When asked about the history behind the house, 
Brian explains they know nothing about it except that it used to belong to an old lady and they bought it very cheap. Night falls and the whole family goes to sleep, but Kira is woken up by Stephen, who has wetted his bed. After changing his sheets, Kira goes to the bathroom to listen to her daughter's voice on the answering machine to find a little comfort. But suddenly, Kira can hear the sound of Ellie's voice counting coming from somewhere else, the sink pipes. The voice can still be heard when she leaves the bathroom, so Kira follows it until she discovers it comes from the cellar. When she enters it, she accidentally kicks Stephen's ball, which begins falling down the stairs, and the sound of it bouncing goes on for much longer than it should take it to reach the last step. Kira turns on the light and goes downstairs too, but she doesn't see the ball anywhere. In the morning, Brian wakes up and finds Kira never came back to bed. He goes looking for her and finds her staring at the symbols above the doors. She also has the equation from the cellar written on a piece of paper. While he understands feeling useless, Brian doesn't think obsessing over some random symbols will help. Afterward, Kira calls her realtor to ask for information about the previous owner. Sadly, he only knows that she was the daughter of a well-known academic who owned the house originally, but he promises he'll try to find out more. Still wanting something to do, Kira begins taking pictures of the symbols above the doors before going to work. She sends the picture to her secretary and asks her to search for their meaning while she attends a meeting, but her worry doesn't allow her to pay much attention, so she leaves as soon as she arrives. On her way out, Kira is stopped by her secretary, who lets her know the symbols are Hebrew glyphs and they spell Leviathan, a sea creature from Jewish mythology. Kira goes to pick up Stephen at school and finds him bleeding because he got into a fight when one of his classmates said Ellie is dead. When they get home, Kira searches the internet for information on the Leviathan and finds the drawings match the serpent she had seen next to the Solviti Coagula article. Next, she decides to try the record player, and as the voice begins counting, the abacus in the rec room starts moving on its own. Stephen begins counting as well as he walks towards the hidden compartment, which has opened on its own too. Fortunately, Kira hears him and turns off the record player before rushing to his son and stopping him. When questioned about what happened, Stephen shows no signs of remembering what he just did. Then, Kira goes to look at the painting of the man with his finger raised. She discovers that his name is John Featherston, and the Hebrew glyphs are written on the picture as well. Kira looks for his name on the internet and finds out his entire family had gone missing in this house except for the daughter. At that moment, a strange breeze comes out from under the cellar door, making the power go out. Stephen's voice begins crying out for help from behind the cellar door, so Kira rushes to get him out, but the lock is stuck and she can't find the key. When she looks through the keyhole, an animal eye stares back at her, and she jumps away only to find the real Stephen in the corridor. Suddenly, the cellar door opens on its own and the power comes back, revealing the key had been on the floor all along. Kira hangs the key again before entering the cellar using her phone's flashlight. The door closes behind her as soon as she comes in so she asks Stephen for help, but he's too short to reach the key so he must go grab a chair. While waiting, Kira tries to look into the cellar again and accidentally drops her phone, causing whatever is down there to start breathing heavily and come closer. This beast begins coming up the stairs and Kira is getting desperate to get out, fortunately. Brian arrives just in time to let her out. Later, Kira tells Brian that she felt a presence down there and that her phone is gone. She also comments on the fact the Featherston family had gone missing like Ellie, but Brian thinks she's seeing things that aren't there. To help her calm down, Byron goes down to the cellar to look for her phone, but the only thing he finds is a ball of hair. The next day, Kira goes to the National College of Mathematics, which holds a Featherston wing, to talk to Dr. Remy Fournette, a genius mathematician. Kira gives him a piece of paper with the equation from the cellar and when he reads it aloud, the lights flicker for a second. While solving the equation, Fournette tells her more about Featherston, this used to be his office and he was a colleague of Erwin Schrödinger, the famous scientist that put a cat in a box and said it was both dead and alive. Featherston worked closely with Schrödinger until his son got sick and disappeared from academic circles. What happened to him is a mystery. And the only person that knows is his daughter Rose, who Kira bought the house, but Rose never talks about it because she never recovered. Fournette manages to make a graphic that represents the equation and thinks it represents other dimensions, but this is more complex than anything he's seen before. He'll need time to work on it, so he promises to call Kira with the results. Sometime later, Kira comes home with a new cell phone. As soon as she turns it on, she gets a call from Fournette, who says he's been trying to call her for a while and a strange voice kept picking up, only responding with counting. 
Then he explains he's spoken to a colleague about the equation, and he believes it's related to a branch of mathematics created by alchemists in the 12th century. It seems to be some sort of an incomplete sequence or an unfinished incantation, and it's related to other dimensions. This colleague has also come across a similar equation before in a house in Belgium where the family vanished in thin air too. Brian comes to check on Kira while leaving Stephen alone in the rec room where the abacus is starting to move on its own again. Kira shows Brian the information she's gathered, Leviathan is the serpent of the abyss and the house is called Zeos, which is Greek for the void before time, also known as the abyss. Once again, Brian thinks she's reading too much into decorations, so to make her forget about it, he tries to destroy the equation plaque. However, the hammer only bounces without even making a dent. At that moment, the record player begins playing and Steven moves towards the hidden compartment where he finds a pale-looking Ellie, who keeps on counting while showing glyphs carved on her face. Steven cries out for help, but when his parents get there, the record player has gotten stuck on 10, and Ellie is gone, only leaving her phone behind. The next day, Kira gets a call from her realtor with information on where she can find Featherston's daughter. Kira drives to a nursing home where she finds an elderly Rose in a wheelchair inside the chapel. And her nurse warns her she doesn't speak much nowadays. Deciding to try anyway, Kira tells Rose about Ellie and asks for her help. After a moment of silence, Rose writes down the Leviathan, but explains that isn't its name. It's one of the seven princes of hell, and her father brought it to this world to cure her brother's illness. The ritual isn't in just the cellar, it's the whole house. On her way back, Kira tries to call Fournette, but the line only has static and a voice counting. Meanwhile, Brian has started to do some research of his own, putting the triangles together with the pentagon forms a five-pointed star. This star with the glyphs around it represents the demon Baphomet, the gatekeeper of hell. Its picture shows him making the same hand sign as Featherston on the painting, and its arms say, solve coagula, too. When Kira arrives and sees all this, she realizes Rose is right, the whole house has been designed around it. Kira turns on the record player to explain that the equation probably opens the gate. At the same time Steven loses control of his drone and follows it down the cellar, counting each step. Baphomet is waiting for him at the bottom, and Steven screams as the power goes out. His parents quickly go after him but only find the drone, so they begin searching the house to no avail. When Steven's ball appears bouncing down the stairs, they start hearing a voice counting and follow it to find their son about to enter the hidden compartment. They take Steven away to check on him, discovering the boy is burning with fever. While Brian goes fetch some water, Kira tries to take off Steven's shirt, only to find a start carved on his chest. Suddenly, Steven says he remembers riding a horned beast before he begins counting again. Kira goes looking for Brian again and finds him standing in another room. Counting down, and once he reaches zero, he announces it's here. The door to the cellar opens on its own and strong wind comes out of it as the sounds of Baphomet coming up can be heard. Kira runs to hide in another room, but the demon finds her, so she runs into the cellar with a flashlight in hand. The stairs have magically become much longer and there's a door at the end, so Kira runs towards it to escape the beast. When she finds a tunnel, she crosses it and is shocked to find a huge open area filled with lost souls that are walking in line and counting. Among these souls is Ellie, who Kira finds thanks to her tattoo. Dragging her daughter with her, Kira returns to the stairs, trying to hurry because she can hear Baphomet coming after them, dropping the flashlight in the process. When they return to the house, the power is back on and Kira closes the cellar door to keep the beast inside. The family is all okay. So Kira tells them they should leave, but when she approaches the entrance, she finds her flashlight on the floor. As her family begins counting, Kira opens the door to find the long stairs on the other side. Soon Kira begins counting as well as the house is shown not to be in the woods anymore, but on a desolated land. What do you think of the film? Share your opinion in the comments below, and don't forget to hit the subscribe button.